Okay, so last time we discussed alkalimetry class and let me just give emphasis to this so that you will not forget. Um, alkalimetry is our bitrometric process involving um, the analysis of our acids, meaning our sample class, take note, is an acid and our titrant will be the base. Take note, when you say titrant, it's the one uh, that is added to the sample using a burep. Okay? And then we had our problem solving class. We, uh, we are going to use the same formula for direct titration as well as indirect titration. The same formula with that of the acidimetry. So please review our lesson about acidimetry for the formula for our set of problems. Okay. Now, again, I ended here with the back titration of aspirin. When you say back titration, you're going to repeat all the procedures except that you are going to omit the sample. Okay. So you will be doing the whole procedure for the titration uh, with your titrant, syempre, but then again, uh, there is no sample, meaning you can just titrate the solvent, and most of the time, that is water. Water plus the indicator, and then you will have the titrant. So, ito yung example natin last meeting. Okay? So, we have here the last one that we are going to discuss. So we have your 10 ml sample of diluted phosphoric acid consumed 35 ml of 1.002 normal sodium hydroxide to produce a thymophthalene endpoint. If the blank titration used 70 ml, what is the percent weight per volume of the phosphoric acid? Okay, so this is still alkalimetry since take note, our sample here is phosphoric acid. It's an acid. And then um, this is actually a back titration. So if we're going to identify the given, wait lang, sabayon niya. Bakit? Duwag nandun niya ko ang USB port. Okay, sige. Let, let us list down the given class. We have here our sample. Our sample is um, phosphoric acid that is 10 ml. Okay, and then um, during titration, it consumed 35 ml of the 1.002 and NaOH. So our titrant here is our... NaOH, that's 1.002 normal, and it consumed how much? 35.0 ml. Okay, before you got the end point. Now, um, there is blank titration here. Okay, so during the blank titration, the same class, the same titrant, the same normality for the blank titration, but for the volume, it consumed 70 ml. Now, what is asked in the problem is the percent weight per volume. Now, ano pinakaiba nito sa previous problem natin? Sa previous problem natin, um, the sample is given in grams. Okay, again, the sample is given in grams. Uh, but we are going to use the same formula here. The same formula, percent purity is still uh, equal to the volume of the blank titration minus the volume of the sample times the normality times milli equivalent weight over uh, this time, this is not weight of the sample, instead volume of the sample. Ito lang yung pinagkaiba nila. Times 100, okay? Ito yung pinagkaiba nila. Okay? But take note kasi bakit volume yung gagamitin natin because what is asked here is percent weight per volume. Okay? So let us start. We have percent purity. Again, weight per volume ha is equal to the volume of the blank minus the volume of uh, the sample during titration 
times the normality times the milli equivalent weight divided by, take note, it's the volume of the sample times 100. So this is again the formula to be used if you are going to compute percent weight per volume. Uh, most of the time kasi we are computing percent purity weight per weight. Kasi weight yung given ng sample, this time it's volume. So let's substitute the given we have here for the block. It used 70 ml of the titran minus um, the 35 ml used for the direct titration times the normality of the titran. That's 1.002. Um, that's normal, pero normal is equivalent to MEQ per ml. So take note of that. Let me just use MEQ, MEQ per ml so that we can uh, easily cancel the units. And then for the milli equivalent weight, this is not given in the problem. So we have to compute for this first. And then over the volume of the sample, the sample used was 10 ml times 100, okay? So before we can proceed with the computation, let us first compute for the milli equivalent weight. Formula for milli equivalent weight, so that is molar mass or the mole molecular weight divided by F times 1,000. Kaninong molar mass yan, it should be for the sample. So not the titrant high, it's for the sample. So this is phosphoric acid. So for, for phosphoric acid, that's H3PO4. We have hydrogen, phosphorus, and then oxygen. I'm computing for the molar mass, ha? Three atoms of the molar of the hydrogen, one for phosphorus, four for oxygen, multiplied with their respective atomic. So do not forget to round them off the nearest whole number. Okay, so this is one. Kindly check. I don't have I don't have the periodic table here. Kindly check for the phosphorus. What's the atomic weight? That's 31. 31. Thank you. So, and then we have 16 for the oxygen. So we have 3, 31, and 4 times 16. This is 64. This is 31, huh? So 64 plus 31 plus 3 is 98. So this is 98 grams per mole. And yung gagamitin natin here, 98 grams per mole over, since this one is an acid, so the, the equivalence factor or the F should be the number of replaceable hydrogen. So phosphoric acid has three hydrogen, so therefore we have three here as the F times 1,000. The unit for our equivalence factor class is MEQ per mole. So you have to cancel the mole. 98 divided by 3,000. Ah, oh, taas ka ayaw. <laughs> Let me copy everything. 0 0.0326. Okay, so the unit is grams per MEQ. Okay, so we have now computed the milli equivalent weight. So let us place this here so that we can proceed with the computation. So this is 0 0.0326666 uh, grams per MEQ. Okay, so let us try to cancel the units first. Ah, uh, ito, magiging isang ml na lang ito sila pag minus natin, sinabtract natin. So, we can cancel the ml. We can cancel also the MEQ. And then, wala natin makakancel na iba kasi this is grams and then ml. That will, that what makes it weight per volume na percentage. Okay? So, let us proceed. Dito na lang kasi kulang ang aking space. We have here percent purity is equal to 70 minus 35. I bet that's 35. 35 ml times um, the 1.002 yes, times 0 0.0326666 um, grams. May naiwan pa dyan na grams. Hindi na times 100 na lang sa taas. And then the 10 ml. So let's do the math. 35 times 1.002 times 0 0.032 anim na 6. 
times, uh, sorry, that's one point, oh, kataas din sa number. <laughs> Be patient with the numbers, ha? Kasi I'm not fond of rounding off during the process. We will do the rounding off sa final answer na, ha? 10 ml, I forgot the grams, times 100. Okay, so 1.14561997 divided by 10 times 100 is 11 point, oh yeah, very good, that's 11.46. Um, how about the unit for this? Since we are computing for the percent purity, you don't actually need to write the grams per ml. Ha? You can directly write the percent and then you may just write weight, uh, write weight for weight per volume. So pwede nang ganun, diretsyo. Ito na yung sagot dyan, 11.46%. Okay? So kindly copy first the writings on the screen. I'll just... Attend this graduating students na magpasa ng clear run. Okay, sige. Uh, this should be chapter 6 actually. I'll just edit that later and I'll give you a copy of this one. Okay, so our next lesson is about precipitation and complexation methods of analysis. We are done with the acid-base titration or otherwise known as the neutralization um, reactions involving um, titration method. So this time, dito tayo, precipitation and complexation. Um, why do we have this type of me methods of analysis? Uh, since not all compounds are acids and bases, so definitely we cannot have only the acidimetry and alkalimetry. So how about yung mga compounds natin na they're just salts or salt solutions. They, we cannot classify them either in acid or in base. So dito, dito yun siya mag-fall. Now, when you say volumetric precipitimetry, this is still actually using titration pa rin. So again, we will still do titration here for the precipitation method. Um, it's just that... Uh, this does not involve the neutralization reaction. Instead, what we are looking here is the formation of the precipitate. So like we have a sample and then we have a titrant. And then most likely the end point of the titration will be either the formation of the precipitate or the disappearance of the precipitate. Okay, so again, precipitation method ito. The, the reaction, before we can classify the reaction under this volumetric precipitimetry, we have to make sure first that precipitate will be formed during the reaction, okay, during titration. Now again, how do we determine the end point of the titration? If for acids and bases na alkalimetry and acidimetry na titration, we have change in color due to the use of our indicators. This time naman for the precipitation method or the precipitimetry, we actually still use indicators but um, the signal here is either there is this appearance or cessation of our precipitate or the appearance of the precipita precipitate itself. So there will be appearance of either um, turbidity lang or the actual precipitate mismo. And then again, we are still using indicators here, but not the acid-base indicators. Yung mga acid-base indicators natin, we have the phenolphthalein, which is the most common. I think I have given you a table of the acid-base na mga indicators with their corresponding colors if they are placed in an either acidic or basic environment. So this time, ibang, ibang set of ano na, ito, na indicators, mga internal indicators natin for volumetric precipitimetry. And then aside from that, we have machines or equipment in the laboratory or mga instruments used for the volumetric precipitimetry like the potentiometric or the amperometric na mga equipment. So that's the use na of the sophisticated instruments in the laboratory. But for those na syempre wala tayong access with the uh, with this kind of instrument, then we are just going to do the titration process. But before that, everything will end with computation. Ha? So at the end of this lesson, we'll compute pa rin tayo. 
Ano yung mga indicators natin for this? Number one, <laughs> wala ba tayo na humansa itong mga computation? Pero actually, ang computation nito, napagdaanan yun na molarity and normality pa rin. Though I think wala tayo dito ang percent purity but molarity and normality. Meron. Okay, so again, let's go back. What are the indicators used for volumetric precipitometry? We have number one, ferric ammonium sulfate, or this is abbreviated as FAS, or minsan, um, in the lab, they don't really place the whole name or the FAS. Instead, you will see this as ferric alum. Okay, that's the common name of the FAS. Okay. Now, when do we use the ferric ammonium sulfate indicator? We use this for both direct and residual titration. So just like the acidimetry and alkalimetry, volumetric precipitimetry also has either direct or indirect titration. So direct, diba? remember, is we have one titrant, while for residual titration, we have two titrants used. Okay, so again... Ferric ammonium sulfate is number one indicator here for our volumetric precipitimetry. Now, when you are going to use ferric ammonium sulfate, most likely the standard solution or yung titrant na ginagamit is the standard ammonium thiocyanate solution. Mostly, ha, pag, again, pag ang ginamit na titrant is the ammonium thiocyanate solution, we are going to use this indicator. So the thiocyanate from the titrant will react with either the mercury or silver ions na present sa, sa sample natin or sa another titrant and then magpo-form siya ng white precipitate. Okay? Of either silver or mercuric thiocyanate. Tapos yung thiocyanate ion reacts with ferric ammonium sulfate para mag-form siya ng red ferric thiocyanate. Actually, I want to explain this using the reaction later. Mas maintindihan kasi natin yon. But nevertheless, please take note that the end point of the reaction if you're going to use the ferric ammonium um, sulfate is color red. Okay? Color red. So ganito yung mangyayari, class. You have here... Um, the silver nitrate, again, silver nitrate, this is either this is either the sample or actually this one is another titrant, okay? So this is the titrant number one. If you're going to do indirect or residual titration, magre-react yan siya sa standard another titrant, which is the ammonium thiocyanate. And then, Magkakaroon siya ng white precipitate called silver thiocyanate plus the ammonium nitrate. So this one is a white precipitate. Okay? Now, um, this one, this ferric ammonium sulfate, ito yung indicator. Okay? Ito yung indicator na magre-react with the excess ammonium thiocyanate. Pag nag-react yan siya doon sa excess na ammonium thiocyanate, which is the titrant, ferric thiocyanate will be formed which is, which is red in color and this will explain why we have a red endpoint sa titration. Okay? Ito lang yung um, reaction. Okay? Wait lang. Wait lang. Ano man eh? Oh, quest questions about the use of the indicator? Medyo, ano lang ito, complicated because this is trying to explain to us bakit red ang color ng endpoint if we are going to use the ferric ammonium sulfate. Okay, again, if you are ano, confused with ano, this one, the explanation sa, sa PowerPoint, just look at the ano, equation. So you will start here. This is our titrant. This can be another titrant here for residual titration. So both titrants will be reacting with each other, forming a white precipitate first. This is the first one. The first precipitate to be formed is the silver thiocyanate. And then the excess uh, titrant, the excess ammonium thiocyanate will react with our indicator, the FAS. This is the FAS, ferric ammonium sulfate. 
So, leading to the formation of a red precipitate, which is the ferric thiocyanate. And then again, this signals the endpoint of the titration process. Okay, that's the first titran, uh, the first indicator class. Next, the second indicator is the potassium chromate. PS. Again, this one is already the second indicator. Now, this one forms a red precipitate of silver chromate, which is seen against the background of white silver chloride. So actually, just like the ammonium, uh, the fast, the ferric alum, there will be a formation first of a white precipitate before you will obtain the red one. The red one will signal the end point of the titration process. So in here, the titrant use is the silver nitrate. If you look at the equation below, you will see sodium chloride plus sodium chloride there is a sample, an example of a sample, okay? Remember, sodium chloride is neither an acid or a base. So if we are going to titrate and determine the concentration of sodium chloride, then we cannot use alkalimetry or acidimetry. So we are going to use this one, the precipitation reaction. So again, please take note. Sodium chloride here is a sample and then silver nitrate is a titrant. So if, um, if they are going to react, this will form a white precipitate called silver chloride and another substance, which is sodium nitrate. Now, the excess silver nitrate will react with our indicator. Our indicator, again, is potassium chromate. This is the second indicator that can be used for the volumetric precipitimetry, leading to the formation of this one. A silver chromate, which is also red in color. And then if the red color already occurs in the reaction, then that means it's already the end point. Okay? And then aside from the two, the ferric alum and the silver chromate, uh, sorry, the potassium chromate, we also have the so-called adsorption indicators, which are used if we are going to identify or analyze halides. When you say halides, we are referring into the halogens. Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Uh, most of the time, it's the four. We, we, seldom, we seldom analyze the astatine. But again, ginagamit si adsorption indicator most of the time sa determination of the halogens. Uh, by direct titration, take note, direct titration tayo dito and our titrant is silver nitrate. And what are those um, indicators included here? We have the DCF or the dichlorofluorescein, the eosin uh, Y and the tetrabromophenolphthalein ethyl ester or the T. So meron tayong tatlong classing adsorption indicators. Okay? So, ayun na lahat yung mga indicators natin for the volumetric precipitimetry. Let's summarize that. We have the ferric alum or the ferric ammonium sulfate. The end point is red. Red precipitate. Okay? Red color. That is also true for the second one, the potassium chromate. We will still get the red one. But for the adsorption indicator, this differs <laughs> kasi tatlo sila. But we call them adsorption indicators. Tatlo sila, DCF, AUSIN Y, and the T. Nagamit sila for the determination of our halogens. And our standard solutions. When you say standard solutions, these are our titrants used for the titration process. Like if we're going to identify or determine the concentration of our halogens, we may either use the silver nitrate, the ammonium thiocyanate, or the combination of the two if we are going to do indirect or residual titration. Okay? So it's 0 0.1 normal silver nitrate and 0 0.1 normal ammonium thiocyanate. Okay? Questions or clarifications so far? And this one. Just po, the next meeting. Every day is a quiz day. And that will be our last meeting for the QC next meeting. Because the week after next week will already will will be exam week already. 
So last na yun. So you are going, you have to expect that we will have our quiz. Kasi dalawa pa lang yung quiz natin. Okay? So we will have our quiz with this one. Wala, walang questions regarding our indicators. So let us continue with the types of volumetric precipitation methods. Starting with the more method. This is ano ha, under the precipitation methods. May mga type lang sila. Okay? Depende kung uh, direct or residual ba or indirect. And then, depende din kung ano yung titrant and yung indicator na gagamitin. But the first one is called Mohr Method, which is named after Carl Friedrich Mohr, the one who made this method class. Now, when do we use the Mohr Method? If we are going to identify or determine chloride content. So like if we have drugs or chemical substances na sa tingin natin meron silang chloride content and we want to know how much is the chloride content, then we can use this method. So during the more method titration, the chloride, the sample itself, is titrated with silver nitrate. So take note, the sample is a chloride. And then any chloride, ha, it, it may be sodium chloride, potassium chloride. As long as, as it contains chloride, you can use the more method. Okay? So, again, the chloride, the sample is titrated with the silver nitrate. So, take note that the titrant here is the silver nitrate. And then, the indicator to be used for more method is the potassium chromate. So, you can list that down ha, para you will not be confused. More method, sample, chloride. Titrant, silver nitrate. Indicator, potassium chromate. Para madali atong life. Okay? So, this will be how the reaction goes. You have here excess silver ions from the titrant, which is the silver nitrate, reacting with the chromate from the indicator, which is a yellow solution. And then when these two reacts with each other, react with each other, we will have the red precipitate which is called the silver chromate, okay? Now, again, um, we use this method for the determination of chloride. Most of the time, chloride in drinking water. Not the distilled water, ha? Kasi the distilled water only contains H2O. Pero what we are looking here is the drinking water, like coming from the, from the faucet, like the tap water or the so-called mineral water. So that's the difference ha, between mineral and purified and distilled water. If you want to drink distilled water, you are just drinking H2O. But if bumili kayo sa tindahan ng mineral water, so syempre you expect, aside from water, it contains minerals. Okay. So, and other substances. So just like this one, this contains chloride. So pwede natin determine gaano karaming chloride yung water sample natin. So that is for the more method. Now the next one, we have three methods here for the precipitation reaction. The second one is Bolhard method. So si Bolhard method naman, this is different ha kasi this is an indirect titration. Indirect or back titration procedure. Now, what are the samples that we can test here using the Volhard method? First, we can determine an ions na magpa-precipitate with silver. So ano yung examples of ions na magpa-precipitate with silver? We have chloride, bromide, iodide, and the thiocyanate. So yan yung mga pwedeng samples for the Volhard method. Okay, I hope that is clear. Volhard method is indirect, and then ang um, sample is any ion that will precipitate if magreact with silver. Now, what is the titrant here? The titrant, syempre is indirect siya, so dalawang titrants pala. We have the first one, the silver nitrate. Okay, the excess silver nitrate, that's the first titrant. 
para mag-precipitate yung iron. And then, the excess silver nitrate will, will be titrated with standard ammonium thiocyanate. So please take note, first titran silver nitrate, second titran ammonium thiocyanate. And then, indicator. What's our indicator here? The fast or the ferric alloy. The ferric ammonium sulfate. Okay? So again, this is called the Volhard method named after the one who formulated this, Jacob Volhard. Okay? So this one is the reaction for the method. You have here the silver. That's the, this, this is coming from the silver nitrate had the first titran. And then we have here the sample. Example, the chloride. We are determining the amount of chloride in a certain sample. So these two will react forming silver chloride. Okay? Silver chloride is a white precipitate. That's the first one that will be formed. And then since silver is... Uh, ano, is added in excess. So again, there will be excess silver ions that will be reacting with the thiocyanate coming from the second titrant, the ammonium thiocyanate, forming silver thiocyanate. And then the excess thiocyanate ion coming from the second titrant will react with the iron. Saan ito galing? Sa indicator natin. Remember, our indicator is ferric ammonium sulfate. When these two react, there will be the formation of a red complex, the ferric thiocyanate, and that will signal the end point of the titration process. Okay, so yan yung pagkasunod-sunod ng reaction, reactions for our ball hard method. Okay, questions about more or ball hard method? Or clarifications? Or basig natulog na mudira? Siguro na pa estudyante. Wala. Sure na. Sure na good. Okay. Again, kay class. Continue. Tapos, pagkahuman na ni kay computation na uh, I think I cannot finish the computation. I mean, I cannot even start the computation this afternoon. So we will have that next meeting. But we'll have a little, uh, I mean, a short quiz first. Uh, objective na yung quiz muna natin on Wednesday. Wala pang computation, syempre. Ito yung mga diniscuss ko ngayon. Okay? So additional thing that you have to, to know about the Volhard method, uh, there are times that we are going to introduce or add nitrobenzene in the sample. Uh, the purpose of adding this is to form a film over the precipitated silver chloride. If we go back to our reaction, uh, the, first, the first reaction will be, uh, will be between the silver and the chloride, forming the silver chloride. And then always remember, class, this is a board exam question. Silver chloride is a white precipitate. Okay, white precipitate siya. So to film this, I mean to mask this or to para hindi siya maka-cause ng variations sa results of the titration process, they're going to add nitrobenzene. For the exam question, yan. Okay, that is for the Volhard method, ha? And then lastly, we have the Fahans method, which uses the adsorption indicators. So we have three types of indicators. Meron din tayong three types of method, methods sa ating precipitation reaction. So isa-isa sila. Isa-isa sila ang indicators. Sa Fahans method, we're going to use the adsorption indicators. For example, the BCF, the dichlorofluorescein, is used for chloride determination. So the sample is chloride. The indicator is the BCF. And what will be the endpoint here? The endpoint is marked by green suspension. So originally, the substance or the sample will be colored green and then it will turn to pink after. So if the solution turns into pink, again, that's the end of the titration process. And then, um, remember, we have three adsorption indicators. So aside from DCF, we have the AUCIN, which is used for the determination or analysis of the bromide, the iodide, and the thiocyanate. So ito naman silang tatlo. AUCIN ang kanilang 
indicator. So this is named after the one who formulated this one also, Casimir's Fahans. And ito yung pinakabago nating method for silver halide. Okay, silver halide method. So let's summarize the three methods of volumetric precipitometry. For the type of titration, more is direct. Volhard is back or residual. Yung fahans kasi medyo um, iba yung ating process here. Pero titration process pa rin naman siya. Sa titrant, we have silver nitrate for more. Volhard is actually dalawa. Kindly add na lang since back or residual titration ito. The first titrant is the silver nitrate. And the main titrant, the second titrant, is the ammonium thiocyanate. And then, ang indicator, isa-isa sila, si more potassium chromate, si Bolhard is fast or the ferric alum. And then for fahans, we have the adsorption indicators, the DCF, the T, or the eosin Y. For the endpoint, both more and Bolhard meron red color, red precipitate or red complex. For fahans, it's green turning into pink. Okay, for the endpoint. Okay, so please, please be familiar with this one. I just don't know if you had your experience doing this in the laboratory since I, I, I can remember na the titration process for this precipitation method is included supposedly in the lab activities. I just don't know if nag-titrate kayo. And kung nag-titrate kayo, ano ba ang ginawa nyo? Acidimetry, alkalimetry, or nabutan nyo itong precipitimetry method. Medyo complicated lang yung precipitimetry method, especially the Fahans method kasi this involves a lot of drying, papasok mo pa sa oven, and so on. Okay, now for the argentometry, this is a type of titration involving silver ions. So, like if, ano, yung, yung actually itong more and ball hard since gumagamit ng silver nitrate for the reaction or for the titration process, kasali, kasali pa rin, under pa rin sila sa argentometry. Just take note that if a, subs, if a titration process uses the silver ions, an argentometry ang tawag natin. So for silver, most of the time, ginagamit siya, mas suitable talaga ang silver sa pagdetermine ng chloride. So analysis of the chloride ito, mostly. So specifically, silver nitrate for argentometry. And then, sodium tetraphenyl boron titrations. Ang gamit naman ito is to precipitate nitrogen. Okay. Organic nitrogen sa mga, sa mga substances natin. Mga organic substances din natin like sa alkaloids or sa mga amines natin. Okay? But um, this is not just for nitrogen determination. This can also be used for ammonium, potassium, and even silver ion. So as long as... Bakit nasali siya dito sa discussion? Kasi this one is a form of volumetric precipitimetry. So this is dependent. The reaction is dependent in the formation of precipitate. So just like when you have nitrogen, uh, like you have alko alkaloids coming from your plant sample, and then dagdagan mo siya ng... Ano, sodium tetraphenyl boron with chloroform as the indicator, you will really see the formation of precipitate. And that precipitate includes the nitrogen. Okay? So, ayan, kaya siya kasali dito sa discussion. So, take note, sodium tetraphenyl boron titration, ang sample natin, can be nitrogen coming from our organic substances like alkaloids. And then ammonium, potassium, and silver ions can also be precipitated using this one. Our titrant is the sodium tetraphenyl boron itself, but the indicator here is the chloroform. Okay? Now, saan natin ginagamit yung precipitation method? So this is precipitation method as a whole, ha? As a whole. Uh, it can be more ball hard, fahans, argentometry, or sodium tetraphenyl boron titration. As long as my formation of precipitate, precipitation method sila lahat. So pwede tong gamitin, not just in pharma, but in industry, yung, yung food industry. Okay? So just like 
salt content determination ng ating mga junk foods and other types of foods. So kung gusto nating gusto nating i-identify yung salt content nila, we can always do the titration process. But again, um dito siya mag-fall precipitation methods. Yung iodide in our iodized salt. So yung Eh, syempre, di ba, salt, sodium chloride, and then since iodized nga siya para to avoid certain conditions involving deficiency in iodine. So kung we want to ascertain the amount of iodine in our iodized salt, iodized salt, pwede din yun kasi magperform din yun siya ng precipitate or silver co- content in coins. Alam ko kung may silver pa ba yung mga coins natin nowadays. But yung ano yung silver gold and what's the other one? Ah, the copper. Yung grupo na yan sa periodic table, di ba ang tawag natin sa kanila coinage metals because ginagamit talaga sila to make coins. So if we want to know also the silver content of our coins, we can also do titration process for this. And then yung mga content ng mineral content ng ating mineral water, not just sulfate, that's also true for other minerals as long as we can produce precipitate during the reaction. Okay? Questions before we'll move on with the complexation methods. Can I time pa ba ako? How many time? It's 425. But I think we we can end our discussion here. Questions sa precipitation methods. Oh. Matapos ko ito next time. Uh, we'll be discussing complexation methods. Si complexation methods is almost similar to the precipitation methods. Iba lang yung concept niya. May, ka- may kakaiba sa concept niya. Before tayo mag-end sa sample problems. Okay. Sample problems, di ako na siya mag-end. Uh, hindi ko na ito ibibigay as assignment ha, kasi kulang ako sa time. Okay. Questions muna before tayo mag-end. Kaya mamirma na sa tag-clearance din. Hmm? 